Hello, and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio, where you can discuss, debate, and get advice on how to discover and shed the bitches of fear, insecurity, self-doubt, and negative mindsets, so you can realize your dreams and life purpose, and create and accelerate the riches you want in life. Join us here live every Tuesday at noon Eastern, and dialogue with us at 818-572-2910. You can also chat with us at Blog Talk Radio slash Shedding the Bitch, or share your stories on our website at SheddingTheBitch.com. Whatever the bitch is that's holding you back from living your life to the fullest, it's not worth giving up the riches in life that you deserve. So call in now and let Bernadette Bowes know what's holding you back. 818-572-2910. All right, good day, good day, good day, everyone. Oh, my gosh, this is the last day of our Goals to Riches series on our Shift to Riches private Facebook forum. And so what I do, because we are going to be talking about hope today, so what I decided to do is also embed our um, Shedding the Bitch podcast that typically airs at noon on Tuesdays. And I thought it was a, an appropriate conversation to have for all of our Shedding the Bitch Shift to Riches community members, both with, within our private forum on Facebook um, and in our Shedding the Bitch radio podcast community. And those of you who are listening to the, the podcast, you can also go to Facebook, uh, join the, join the uh, private group, look it up. It's called Shift to Riches because I'm also broadcasting live streaming right there on that on that page um, as we speak. Uh, so um, you, you can also do that there as well. Now, for those of you who are watching um, from a Goals to Riches series perspective, I may bring on our, any guests that we have that are, are sitting on the, on the portal uh, of our uh, Shedding the Bitch podcast portal in case they have questions or comments um, or want to share their story. And I would just ask anybody listening, let's talk about hope today. We want to talk about inspiring, um, uplifting, motivating uh, conversations. So as we kind of end our goal continues, and life will continue on on our Shed in the Pitch podcast each Tuesday at noon Eastern time as well within our Shift to Riches private forum, uh, we want to kind of go off in, in, in a in a high note, inspiring note, motivating note, hopeful note, because we will get through everything that we're dealing with right now. We will come out on the other side, and I can guarantee you we will be better people, and we will be a better community, and we will be a better world as a result of it, uh, because I can't help but think that people are reevaluating their life right now, and I know they are because I'm talking to them each and every day, and they're really considering, okay, so how do I need to do things differently, but more so, how can I be different and how can I give into the world differently than I was uh, yesterday, taking things maybe for granted or, or just not living up to their own expectations and their own will and desires and hopes and dreams. So that's what we want to be talking about today. So actually, we're going to kick off this uh, part of the conversation, and I am going to open up the uh, lines on our Shedding the Bitch podcast stream. Hello? So, hi. How are you? I am amazing and wonderful at the same time, if that's even possible. Well, that's awesome. That's fabulous. That's awesome. Do you have a question? Do you have a question or no, a comment I mean, I, regarding a book that you could share? Well, I've already shed the bitch. You know, there's a lot of <laughs> bitches, and I, listen, and I listen to what bitches say, and I've already come to a conclusion about all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Miss me with the BS. I'm not trying to listen to that no more. And so I've been enjoying the benefits of doing that process you're talking about, and I am so, so very very blessed because I got this freedom that doesn't mess around. Matter there of fact, it takes, care, it takes care of business and kicks these bitches in the ass. And I'm like, man, that's what I'm well, talking let, about. Let me, let, let me just level set you in regards to what the bitches are in our community, in our world. And those are your internal insecurities, negativities, fears, doubts that may cause you to lash out onto the world. So it's not about the stereotypical B that people have in their life. It's actually yeah. the, those things that we hold 
to that cause us some pains and some uh, right. doubts and lack of belief. Yeah, I had to go all the way back. You know what I'm saying? I had to go back to the beginning when all this started for me. Not to talk about anybody oh, else, awesome. talking about me. And oh, so awesome. for me, yeah, so for me, when I went back in time, <clears throat> I was looking at all the trauma and everything. And I had questions, you know, and people were getting a little bit frazzled by that. They were getting upset with me because I'm asking questions like throwing salt on the wound kind of thing. But I wasn't doing that. I just wanted right. to get free from this stuff. You know what I mean? I just oh. wanted to get free from it. And once I and was okay with everything, I went about my business, and I was praising God because God is good not just sometime but all the time. Nice. Very, very nice. Well, then stick around because this whole, this whole uh, session within our Goals to Riches Blueprint series uh, that is wrapping up today is all. Hang in there, and thank you for joining in, and uh, I think you'll gain a lot out of, um, you know, what we're going to be discussing, and then feel free to go to our Shift to Riches Facebook page if you're on Facebook, and ask to join, and you can actually watch me right now live streaming um, in this conversation on hope. So thank you so much for joining, and um, I'll check in with you before we end the show, okay? Uh, I hope so. I mean, you got my number. If there's any disconnect, because I'm, are, I got people, I got people are, I deal with on. Oh, I got go people ahead, that go are ahead. mentally. I got people that are mentally ill, and they're narcissistic, mm-hmm. and they're causing problems in the family units. And these people are having a difficult time. So I'm always available for these people as well, and many others like you. Right. So, but right. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm interested in. You know, I'm interested in. I'm not, I'm in your audience because you're on stage and I'm in the audience, obviously. But you know, I'd like to be on stage with you and look at the audience as well. You know, right, right. Well, then feel free to reach out to me anytime. Um, all my information is either on the blog talk page um, where we are broadcasting our Shedding the Bitch podcast, or it's out on Consulting dot com. Feel free to reach out to me. All right. Yeah, but thank yeah, you that will. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into this conversation regarding hope. Um, Because I understand that many of you are really feeling, and, you know, you are already going uh, through difficult times maybe. You are already dealing with tragedy. You are already dealing with maybe a failure or a misstep, as I like to call them. You may have already been dealing with um, a health situation or a financial situation or just a career or a business situation that was already draining you, that was already causing you to lose hope. And then all of a sudden, pow, we have this, you know, this COVID-19 smacking a square in the face. Uh, well, that does not help those that were already suffering um, that, uh, to, to even find any grain of hope out of now that piling on, piling on on top of them. And yet we're, we want to be talking about today and we want to be insur- assuring each other that, yes, there is still hope. Things will turn around. There is still a pot at the end of that rainbow. There is still stars in that dark sky. There is still, there is still dreams to be made um, and goals to pursue. Uh, there is still life to live. Uh, because we certainly don't want to, um, as hard as it is, as hard as it is, we still don't want to kind of dim our light, uh, dim that hope, because then where does that leave us? It leaves us sitting on the couch doing nothing. It leaves us sitting on the couch eating ice cream or maybe drinking or uh, relying on some su- substances. It leaves us with no energy, no motivation, no clarity, no will to want to figure out how to kind of pull ourselves up. And each and every minute, let alone each and every hour, day, week, or month that goes by that you're you're allowing, you're choosing to be in that junk, be in that hopelessness, well, just think about the fact that all of a sudden you're going to look back and you're going to be like, where did that time go? How did I lose all that opportunity to continue living and maybe you you continue surviving but yet at the same time you know you're you know fueling yourself bit by bit small small steps big big accomplishments so 
you want to for sure be at least finding your way forward, even if it is small baby steps, even if it is crawling, even if it is then a doggy walk, even if it is then kind of just slowly like a tortoise, uh, you know, going forward and then, you know, accelerating into a, you know, rabbit, you know, rabbit type of speed. Um, we certainly want to ensure that, uh, you know, each of us are spending time each and every day just at least affirming hope into our lives. And yet at the same time, we now could be trapped, isolated in a room or a house or where, wherever the case might be with other individuals who are fueling that hopelessness. You know, maybe you did, even before everything happened, maybe you did lose your job, you lost your business or were losing it. Maybe you did have, you know, a weight issue or a health issue, a fitness issue, a money issue of any kind. And now people are, you know, even layering on with questioning you and doubting you and ridiculing you and judging you. Why can't you find a job? Why can't you, you know, start a new side hustle to get work? Why won't you go out and at least, you know, do a mundane task in order to earn money? Why can't you for a walk? That's, you know, one thing that many of us can still do is go for a walk, go for a jog, uh, do some exercises, put on a, a, a fitness video. And so you have, you know, all these influences. You know, why can't you figure out a way and get creative and use your smarts to, to earn some money to put food on our table? Uh, you know, why, why can't, can't, you know, just throwing it at you. And that's causing even more hopelessness, more stress, more anxiety, more fear. Um, and that's just kind of planning you, let's use that couch analogy, that's just planning you further into that couch uh, than maybe you were, you know, just a week ago or two weeks ago. So, we, you know, hope is all about recognizing that, yes, in darkness there, there are stars that are even brighter than when, you know, the, the city lights are, are shining around it. Uh, in a storm, yes, we know that beyond that storm there is a rainbow. There is a rainbow. And beyond that fear, there is courage and bravery. Um, so we want to be searching and grabbing at those things um, as often as we can. Uh, because we and you, you, you can thrive through this. You can, even if you did come into the situation with some, you know, small degrees of hopelessness, you can actually be even uh, on top of everything that's going on. You can be like, well, you know what? You know, this is my stuff thing compared to right now. So I'm not going to add to it and make it heavier on me, on my heart, on my soul, on my being, I'm going to actually look at it and go, wow, my problems back then weren't anywhere near as difficult and as trying and as anxious and as fearful as I made them out to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that, you know, where I am right now is different, is new, is bigger, is better, even if it is small little tweaks and changes that I could be making to address those things, but to ensure that this current situation, this current um, struggle that many, many of you are feeling doesn't add to it and just kind of push you down even further. Uh, and you can do that, do that in a number of ways, but what, who I want to talk to first is, um, I'm sorry, I have a fan above me and it's not allowing me to keep my papers, um, Still, uh, so um, who I want to talk to in, uh, initially is I want to talk to those people that may not recognize what someone else is dealing with. Now, you know, it's a, I, I find it to be a beautiful thing being single right now. Some people are looking at it, you know, you can look at things half empty or half full. Some people are looking at it if they're single and they're going, oh, my God, now I really have no one to talk to. I have no one to interact with. I have no one to touch you know, and to feel and, and to go through this with me. I, I'm, I'm actually the half full type of gal. Uh, I'm looking at it as, I, you know, I don't have those worries and those anxieties. I don't have that extra cleaning and, and, and contamination possibility. I don't have certain things that um, other people have to deal with. Um, now, I do have a dog, so I have a heartbeat and some breath in my, in my house. 
Um, but at the same time, I can reach out and interact, um, you know, with my 11 brothers and sisters, with my 22 nieces and nephews um, who just joined. Hi, Ashley. Um, hi, Kevin. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm looking at it as that, you know, we can find life and thriving in this environment. It's just a matter of if you want to. And yet if you have people in your environment that you have direct contact with, you know, each and every day, they can actually be fueling your, your hopelessness even without knowing it, even without paying attention to it. Remember the four A's of change, awareness, attention, um, acceptance, and action. So um, I want to speak to those that, have, that are in a collective space, multiple people in it. Uh, this is at home or in the workplace, even if it's remote. I want to tell you know, so the, the, the family members, the friend members, the, um, the company members, the business members, what each and every one of us need to do is, is in, to ensure that we are checking in with those around us. We certainly need to be checking in with ourselves, but we also need to be paying attention to those around us. And we can't assume anything. And we can't just go, oh, yeah, yeah, they're okay, they're okay, they're okay. If there is a a more appropriate and more needed time for each of us to be vulnerable, to take risks, to be uncomfortable with difficult conversations, to, you know, really put ourselves in someone else's shoes, and yet if we don't know what those shoes are, we need to dig in a little bit deeper Hi, Bora. Nice to see you. Thank you for that. Um, then we need to we need to you know each be willing to ask some some maybe hard questions. Ensure that we're not only just accepting the initial response, but we're really engaging and having a conversation and really learning and really feeling and 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 kind of trying to read between the lines, trying to get under the covers and really get down to the source of open-ended questions such as, how are you doing? How is this? How are you adjusting? What fears, what insecurities, what doubts are you experiencing? What is the effect of this isolation having on you? What is the feeling of being disconnected from your friends, from your, your work, uh, from your you know, family members that could be spread out elsewhere? You know, what exactly are you experiencing? And, it, and cover the gamut emotionally, mentally, spiritually. You know, there's a – hi, Carrie. There's a good many people right now, especially we're in Holy Week. I'm very, you know, I'm very uh, religious, very faithful, very Catholic. <laughs> I love my, um, my mass service, and I love going to even – especially my uh, particular cathedral. I love the celebration. And I'm the CEO, Christmas, Easter, and, you know, other times. Uh, you know, I love that weekly um, uh, routine I, ha- I have. Um, and it's important to me. And so right now it feels very, you know, very fragmented, you know, from being able to go to church. I, I expressed this on Facebook um, last weekend because it was Palm Sunday. I, I love going to Palm Sunday. You know, and and getting that palm and making it into a cross and sharing it with the kids that are sitting around me, and so I kind of express that on Facebook, and the next thing you know, I have a palm coming to me, which I'm very excited about. Um, but so this week, you know, people are also kind of starting to really um, uh, kind of uh, get emotional around all of this experience that we're going through right now. Um, and only because it's heightened by the fact that it's going to be Easter. Kids are typically out, you know, doing their, their egg hunts and getting dressed up in pretty white dresses and, and sweet little, you know, suits, um, you know, and going to Mass and seeing their neighbors and seeing their community and celebrating Mass. Uh, so we have to be sensitive with each other to find out how are these losses how are these adjustments? How are these pivots that we're making? How are, you know, each individual handling them uh, and really ensuring that we're having an open dialogue with them about it? Um, and so I mentioned open-ended questions. 
you know, you don't want to ask questions that just say yes or no. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay, or no, 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 whatever. You want to ask open-ended questions that make them express what they're feeling. Now, if that kind of creates a wall as well, what you could then be doing is sharing your own experience. So, you know, they can relate. The best thing to do to kind of mirror someone and, and to be on the same page with someone is also uh, being able to relate to each other. So maybe they need to hear what you're going through, the good, the bad, the, the you know, good, bad, and ugly. And so they can then say, oh, well, you know what, I'm going through that same thing. This is what I'm feeling. Uh, and it could be about even, you know, suggestions, ideas, um, tips, tricks that you're using that then they can then express, wow, well, I had this idea or I've been doing this, so forth and so on. So now you're creating a dialogue that's more than just a surface artificial conversation and you're really putting yourself in that other person's shoes to ensure that if, if there is any, any, any diminishment, diminishing, diminishing of their light, um, that, you know, their, their hope has turned hopeless, you can catch it and you can identify it, and you can um, support them in any way, shape, or form. So we definitely, those of us who have hope, who have trust and faith, who know that we can and are surviving and thriving, more so thriving, uh, we need to be a little bit, a lot more sensitive, a lot more sensitive to what other people might be going through. Um, So we can do our part to kind of raise up the level of hope that's out there, okay? Um, oh, all right. So if you, if you even can't get them just to verbally share with you, then just watch their behavior. Watch their behavior. Even if they are, um, you know, to where you, you have a family of four or five or whatever the number might be, and one of them, you know, kind of uh, tested as positive, or or maybe they're even just sick with the flu or allergies, so they go and isolate themselves. Um, you know, you want to check in. You want to ensure that you're watching their behavior, you're watching their body language, you're watching, you know, their words or lack thereof. You're watching their behavior. You know, whether it comes to the TV or their their um, phone or laptop, reading. You know, if they had a hobby of wanting to write on a regular basis and now they're not. If they had a hobby of you know, sitting down and, uh, you know, drawing, whatever the case might be, you really want to look for differences in not only whether or not they're sharing with you, but also what their behavior is, um, what their mood is, what their body language is telling you uh, in all of those respects. Um, Because all of that speaks volumes to what a person might be dealing with. Um, All right, so then what can you do, any of us, if you've lost even a million of hope, what can you do to uh, ensure that uh, you're focused on finding that light again, finding that pot of gold, finding those stars in the dark sky? Uh, What can you be doing? So going back to your goals, to the plan that you had before all of this happened. And if you didn't have one, then work to create it. Now, if you are, you know, hopeless and to a you know, deeper degree to where you are not motivated, you are, have no energy, you have no desire, you, you have no um, interest in any way, shape, or, or form to get off that couch and to actually have to think, <laughs> let alone have to put pen to paper or, you know, do anything. Well, then what you can do is what I, I talked about earlier in the week. Um, one of my favorite tools I've used for decades to kind of, help me to um, push through, overcome, or even just uh, pursue and achieve something. And that is fake it until you make it. If you're not feeling hopeful right now, then pretend you are. Fake that you are. Put a smile on your face. You know, put, uh, put a smile into your eyes. Change your posture. Change the fact that you're, you're, you know, slouched or sitting on the couch or laying on the couch and get up and maybe move over to you know, a desk or a table or some other, you know, place in the environment that doesn't draw you back into that, that idea of what you were on the couch and just at least fake it until you make it. Tell yourself that you feel a certain way. Uh, Use certain words as opposed to the words that you may have already been using. Hi, Dondra, Pamela, nice to see you. Thank you for joining. 
but lean on faking it until you make it. Now, I wouldn't suggest you do that when someone does ask you and want to engage with you and really understand who you are. I'm not saying to lie. I'm not saying to lie. I'm not saying to to hide the truth or to bury the truth. Uh, What I'm saying is if you need a little tweak, a little shift in how you're thinking and what you're doing, then just fake it until you make it. Come up with those goals that right now you may not feel like you want to do anything about them, but at least sit down and write them out. If you don't want to get creative and visionary about it and dreamy about it, well, that's okay. Lay out the the basic goals that you might have for yourself when it comes to money or your health or your fitness or your spirituality or your work or your or your family or or any other aspect of your life. Um, you know, j- because the moment that you get it out of your head and onto a piece of paper and you start at least laying out, hmm, that then is going to have actions against it, hmm, that then is going to have measurements, which could include incentives, and we, we've talked about rewards and incentives, and we've also talked about regrets and consequences. But so as you you start to, you know, kind of fake it till you make it, defining your plan, defining those actions, you might feel, and I, I'm going to expect that you will, feel a little shift, a little pull toward wanting to do something about it, not just let it sit there on a piece of paper. Uh, so, and pay attention to that. Remember the four A's of change, awareness. Once you're aware of it, pay attention to it. Once you pay attention to it, accept it for what it is. If you all of a sudden pay attention to it and you don't like what you're saying and what you've written and what you're experiencing, then accept it and then you can act on it. The fourth A is then to act on it. Uh, so keep, keep those four A's of change close by because they can be helping you drastically right now through all of this uh, change and shift and uncertainty that's going on. Um, and I had mentioned it to de- define the outcomes and the results that you want. So even if you are having to force your goals, force your vision, for, force your dream, not having much luck with this fan above me, um, <laughs> but if you are still having struggles there, still define your outcomes that you want. Define those results that you want. Uh, define those, you know, even those um, uh, accelerated outcomes. Like say you have a revenue goal of this or an income salary goal of this. Make it this just to kind of, you know, open up your mind and open up your, you know, eyes and open up that dreamlike state that if you were to do certain things, you could be achieving um, that bigger outcome. Because, again, the, those outcomes, those potential results should start fueling a little bit of a nudge to want to start taking action on them. Uh, and you can come back when you're more level-headed, when you're more logical, when you're more uh, hopeful, and you could be adjusting them to what, you know, to reality. But right now, many people don't feel like this is reality. It's very surreal what we're going through. So once we, we, we acknowledge, we become aware that this feels really surreal to, to, to us or to you, you know, we could then can um, pay attention to that, that this isn't feeling real, and we can accept it, that this isn't real, this can't be real. And then once we accept that, well, you know what, this is the new normal, and yet we don't even know what the new new normal is going to be, and so we just need to take actions on how to how to thrive in in this new normal right now. Um, some others that you could be doing is obviously um, just being grateful. So many people will have, and you might be able to see the plans book behind me. It's a, my journal. Um, you might be able to see that. And uh, what I would tell you is. Um, you know, sitting down every day and writing out what you're grateful for um, is also going to be um, is also going to be very um, uplifting and energizing and and um, and inspiring and motivating for you because now you're you're kind of really appreciating what you are what you do have in your life. I mean, you have breath, you have a heartbeat, you have you know sight. And, 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 you know, hearing, 
and you're able to to articulate words. You might have the heartbeat of a puppy <laughs> laying on the couch across from you. Um, you might have, uh, you know, you might have the birds singing outside, the fan blowing above you, driving you crazy, but it's there. Start making notes of all the things that, you know, all the blessings that you have in your life. And then just sitting with them and appreciating them, being grateful for them, being thankful for them. And then from a thankful perspective, I'll, I make a list on a, it's not necessarily daily, my gratitude are, um, but I, you know, I'll make a list of who, what, where, when, and how I'm thankful. Little, little different from being grateful, but yet in the same, in the same vein. Uh, and yet I want to pay attention to, you know, whom I'm really great or thankful for um, or what I'm thankful for as well as grateful. So, and those two things also just get you kind of more humble, a little bit more, you know, le- uh, I should say maybe a little less self-loathing or self-pity or depressed or sad or discouraged or uh, unhappy. And, and it just, they kind of help to make you really, really take stock. And I know a lot of you are taking stock right now. Uh, so if you want another way, if you're not ready to think about the goals, if you're not ready to think about an action plan, all the things that we've been talking about for the last week, but that's okay. No one should be judging anyone right now. We all go through changes in our own way. Uh, at least, you know, think about being grateful and thankful. And then lastly, I would um, start trying to do something for someone else. Thanks, Heidi. Appreciate it. Uh, start trying to do something for somebody else. You know, giving, giving and serving others uh, is, uh, can be simple right now, really simple. Even just a, you know, phone call, a Zoom conversation, uh, a, a note in the mail, uh, you know, a, a reach out on next door to see if a friend or a neighbor needs anything. Uh, it, you know, it, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually be serving others. And trust me when I say serving others serves you. Uh, you know, helping others, seeing the, the gratitude and thankfulness on their face and the appreciation that they have for, you know, even the smallest of, of you know, help and service. That, that can't do anything but brighten your heart. That can't do anything than give you a warm, fuzzy feeling. Um, that can't give you anything but, you know, self-pride for yourself. That maybe you stepped out of your own degree of hopelessness to help someone else. And so if, you're, if you really need to, you know, kind of feel human. Some of us just don't feel human right now. We just feel... We, we feel like, you know, we're almost like a prisoner. And there's a degree of appreciation going on around that. It's losing everything and being isolated, uh, you know, away from the rest of the world, uh, even from the rest of the family, uh, you know, can really kind of help us all gain an appreciation for those that, uh, whether or not they're locked up in an actual prison or they're just locked away in, you know, fear, locked away, you know, in, um, I don't want to go to the dark side, but even, you know, from a, you know, human trafficking and all the other horrors of the world, we, we are gaining an appreciation uh, for what those individuals must go through. So uh, just do a little, little something each, each and every day, uh, and that will uh, help lift you and help you find that, that degree or that massive amount of hope that will allow you to thrive during this period, okay? Um, uh, yeah, for Max, I just want to make sure I'm covering everything. Um, but if you have any, if you have any thoughts, if you have any ideas, I'm looking at my text messages as well, just to make sure that because uh, I had mentioned for those of you joining the Goals to Riches uh, live stream, I'm also broadcasting on through our. Um, Shedding the Bitch podcast that we do do on Tuesdays at noon. And I just decided this conversation on hope could be, uh, is very uh, suitable and welcoming to everyone within the community. Uh, So let me just make sure 
that um, there wouldn't be other things there. Uh, but I just, you know, would, um, as we end this journey we've been on through the Gulf to Riches series since last Monday morning, I mean, we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, you know, everything from instilling a richie mindset to having a tool of the five steps to shift to riches. So you can discover, confront, and shed all that junk, all those bitches, as we call them, of fear, negativity, um, angst, uh, uncertainty. Uh, we, you know, we need to shed those out of our hearts and our, our minds and our souls and our beings so then we can create and accelerate the riches in life that we truly, each and every one of us, deserves to have. So then we moved on and we talked about um, your uh, victory plan or your vision to victorious achievement and helped you define all those components that would take your vision and kind of put it in a, a, you know, a, a plan that you can then start pursuing so you achieve victoriously. And then, of course, the four A's of change that we talked about Tuesday night. Uh, regularly used. Stick it in your you know, pocket. Pull it out when needed as you're, you know, trying to work through something, deal through with something, uh, even make a decision on something. Consider the four A's of change, awareness, attention, uh, uh, acceptance, and action. Uh, then we talked about how words matter. When it comes to hope, even consider what it is that you're telling yourself. And if they're uplifting, inspiring, motivating, energizing, fueling words, fueling statements, fueling conversations you're having with yourself uh, through prayer, through meditation, through just being, then great. Uh, Forge forward and continue to build on all of those rich words. But if they're draining words, if they're negative words, if they're bitchy words, if they're words that are causing you to feel more and more hopeless, then make a commitment to yourself to make a change. Because keep in mind, as we've talked about all along, what you focus on expands, dominant thoughts rule your actions, and what you put out in the universe, you get back. So when, where it comes to hope, you, know, you want all of the universe working for you in building up and even just exploding um, through you with hope. And so ensure that all of those words, those thoughts, that, those beliefs that you have within yourself far long before you worry about anybody else, you know, ensure that they're as rich and powerful and abundance attracting as they can be. So then we moved on and we uh, worked through and had you work on your uh, rich goals, you know, your smart goals. And then I even coached you to kind of amp them up even more to make sure that they are results-oriented, they're attracting abundance, they're actionable, and they're, they'll, they're um, uh, structured in such a way that will drive and fuel you to continue moving forward even through the, the, the hard times, the low times, the challenging times. Uh, then we went on and we talked about some um, kind of time management hacks of you being a time manager, acting as a time manager, uh, ha- revenue generating management types of um, tips and advice for you to really think of, of yourself as well as a revenue generator, even in your life, let alone the business, uh, and a number of other time management hacks we talked about Thursday night. Uh, we went on to talk about uh, really uh, some trends and opportunities both current and new opportunities that are coming out of all this. Because there are. There are a tremendous amount of opportunities going on out there, an amount of jobs uh, being created and or expanded on, amount of industries, brand new ones that are cropping up, um, and a lot of opportunities for you to thrive, for you to thrive. And then we moved through. We had a question and answer session on Saturday. We talked about habits and routines Saturday night. We talked about um, tips for those business owners or wannabe business owners of what you need to be doing in this environment in order for you to uh, thrive. Uh, Last night, we talked about how important accountability is. Uh, It's one thing to be responsible 
and responsibility is owning your activities. It's a whole other thing uh, uh, towards you wanting to own or not wanting but needing to own the results of those activities, and that's accountability. So you may have all these, you know, activities and actions and tasks that you're, you know, that you're forging forward with and that you're producing. And yet, if you don't take accountability for whether or not you achieve them or not, then, you know, that's when you really need to consider your degree of accountability. You know, if, are you blaming or are you, are you excusing, ignoring, avoiding um, certain things um, because of the potential missed outcomes? or short, maybe you come up short. So accountability is critical because you can have all the skills, the talents, the experience, and expertise in the world. You can have a, a strong, not 100%, but a strong empowered mindset. But if you don't have accountability, which is why you fall short on that mindset, then you're not going to achieve what you want. And if you ever question why you're doing all this work and, you know, you have a plan, you're taking the actions, but you're not getting your results, you might wear your falling short in regards to accountability. Are you taking ownership of the results that you, you're achieving? Um, so, and then, let's see, and so that was last night, and then we're here. And we are, so, well, I'm sorry, last night we talked about, um, I shared with you my journey beyond what I shared last Monday night with the shift to riches. So beyond and over the last eight or nine years, how did I go from this ultimate corporate tyrant uh, to the person I am today? You know, where, you know, co people commented that I look like I, you know, took 10 years off of my face. Um, great way to have a facelift free <laughs> is to shed all that junk out of your, out of your heart and soul. Um, so we talked about that, and then we talked about some uh, clients that I have and the transformations they have, have made. Because the basic question I'm always asked is, do you really believe people can change? Well, hell yeah. <laughs> Going back to our very first hashtag, hell yeah. Uh, and we, can, we should only people change. Because until that, you know, coffin, you know, is, the nails are in the coffin and it's six feet under, we want to be changing each and every day. We want to be evolving and growing. We want to be shifting to the riches in life that we deserve. Okay? All right. Then I, lastly, I had mentioned, too, that if you wanted any more information in regards to how you can have a sounding board and you can have a, an accountability partner, uh, someone to bounce ideas off of, someone to strategize with, someone to mastermind with, someone to kind of, you know, not necessarily hold your hand, we're all adults, but yet at the same time kind of, you know, call out when you're falling short and, you know, you're lacking in that accountability or when to inspire and motivate and push you forward. Um, but if you're looking for, a, you, know, you know, an individual a, with, along with a peer a group and a, a, a network of experts that can help you achieve the goals that you have for yourself, then please check out our Shift to Riches Accelerator. It's a 12-month program, and you can learn all about it at ballofireconsulting.com forward slash rich accelerator. All right? Uh, so I am going to check online. I'm going to check the radio studio and see if there is anything out there. Um, I'm looking through Deborah. Deborah is out there. Um, yeah, I'd love to know from any of you uh, if you believe um, people can truly change. Let's flip it around. Can you, do you believe that people can't change, that people don't change? Uh, I would love to uh, hear your insights on that, your input on that. All right. I am just so honored and thrilled that you have been part of this series for the, for the last nine days since last Monday. I am thrilled that uh, you've contributed, that you participated, that you've done the work. Uh, certainly be sure that um, if you've only sat in on a few of the sessions, you have till midnight tonight uh, to watch any of the other replays that you need to. Uh, you have till midnight tonight uh, to also download the workbook. You can go to tiny.cc forward slash goals to riches 
to download the workbook. And you can use that at any time that you want. Um, but the uh, replays of all the sessions that we've had for the last nine days come down tonight at midnight. Now, this evening's session, 8 o'clock session, is a session are interested in learning more about the Shift to Riches Accelerator program. So if you are interested in learning more about that, we're going to go under the covers and walk through what that entire program looks like and what the online portal looks like that's, that's available to those members. So you can DM me right here. You can shoot me a private DM, um, even an email at Bernadette Bose at Ball of Fire. Inc.com and just say, yes, I'm interested in sitting in on the 8 o'clock, and I'll make sure that you get that invite, all right? Um, but thank you so much for investing in you, and all I can wish for you is that you do create and accelerate the riches in life that you deserve, and I'll look forward to having you uh, continue within the Shift to Riches private forum Look out for future uh, programs and training sessions and resources because uh, it doesn't stop, uh, you know, it doesn't stop here. All right? So everybody have a beautiful, beautiful day. Are you going um, uh, to check back with Craig? Um, thank you, Deborah. I already did, and it appears that he dropped. So um, he might be still listening, but he's not accessible um, in order for me to, to be able to speak with them. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a fabulous Monday, uh, Tuesday. Have a fabulous Tuesday. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bose. Join Bernadette every Tuesday at noon Eastern as she helps you shift your bitches to riches. And the dialogue is always going on at SheddingTheBitch.com. See you next week. <laughs>